Good morning, Chris. Thank you for being here. Hope this finds you well today. Just going to wait for a few more people to jump on. Hi, Jean. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Going to do another mystery quilt block today. This is an easy one. Hi, Vesta. And hi, Jan from Minnesota. Thank you for being here. It's a beautiful day in Northwest Ohio. Uh, this morning we had a special visitor. Um, we had a rose-breasted gross beak, um, a male. Um, I'm talking birding uh, right now. So spring migration is in full swing um, here and uh, I was just so excited when I see the spring migrants stopping in our yard to get some food. Um, they'll be traveling to their nesting grounds. And so it's just very exciting here right now. Tomorrow starts a 10 day birding festival along the shores of Lake Erie. And every year I volunteer and I take part, part in the, um, trips that they offer. So I am going on some band trips, visiting some areas that I've wanted to bird, but never have gotten there. So this way I'll be familiar with the area when I want to go back myself alone or with my husband. He loves to take walks. So he's not big into the birding unless they're a raptor. Um, if they're big and they eat things, um, he likes those kind of birds, but he's not real thrilled about the little ones. So, um, yeah, it's just the sun is shining. It's beautiful. It's a little cool, but it's perfect weather. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm going to kind of get right to uh, what we're doing. I do want to talk about Card Play, the online retreat with Karen Titus, Holly Sutton, and Barb and Julie uh, from the state of Washington. Um, but I do have an appointment that I will need to kind of stay on time. I'm taking Oliver to see his doctor. Oliver, this is not that kind of an appointment, um, but there are some things going on that I want to address with his doctor and just kind of know where we're at. Uh, so, <laughs> hi Mindy, um, let me flip the camera around. While I'm doing that, please say good morning to each other. This is only going to just take a few seconds, but I need to kind of rearrange my area. And I'll try not to make anybody dizzy while I am... Okay, so my stand wants to rock, which means, there, that seems more balanced. Got a picture of the, the catalog there, which is now live. So we can show you the inside when we want to. It went live yesterday. Thank you to those who um, were excited and have placed some orders with me. I appreciate that. And, okay, um, had to get the hair, my hair out of my way here. It's getting so long and um, I'm trying to do, repair some damage from heat products, uh, heat tools that I've been using in my hair. So. Um, the curly look is me just letting my hair dry naturally and then touching it up with a curling iron. Um, but I, I, when I was using all the tools to straighten my hair, I've done some damage. So I am trying to, um, and when I say damage, I mean losing some hair and, um, I'm not ready to lose my hair. So kind of just got to style it a different way. Hi, Susan and Linda and Sharon and Betty. Um, let's see who else is here. And Kathy. 
Sandy. Good morning. <clears throat> There's Tony. Sunny and 71 in PA. Yay. Okay. So, card play. Um, you can still register for card play, the online retreat. We have um, announced the other bundles that we're going to be featuring during that weekend. I posted it on the Chirpy page. You can just scroll down through and find it again. Usually we were kind of keeping those secret, but everybody was excited to order out of the new catalog and wanted to be able to order the bundles that we were featuring so they could see the projects and then recreate them if they wanted to. So um, that has been posted. And let's see here. Like I said, I've got to kind of keep track of the time. If I can keep it to an hour like we normally do, we're going to be fine. I didn't um, make Oliver's appointment so close that I had to rush off, but um, still, you know, I got to get him ready <laughs> to go see his doctor. So with that, let's see, let's get um, started here. Let's bring in the pieces that um, yesterday I had made a post showing you the pieces that we're going to use and what size they were, but we're going to go over them, okay? So let me redo this because I want to explain why I chose what I chose as we're going along. This right here, your one and a quarter by two and a half piece of designer series paper you want to have multiple colors going on in it because you're going to pull from the colors that you see in this little tiny strip when you're looking at a bigger piece you see a lot of color but then when you chop it down even smaller you're going to lose a lot so cut your strip first see what colors is going on in this piece and then pull colors because you want to pull colors that you see so i want something with contrast so i went with a two and a half inch square of berry burst you can see that next to the um splash okay so i don't know all my new in color summer splash i think it might be um, there's really good contrast next to that. Then we're, um, our second piece of designer series paper is a two and a quarter or a two and a half inch. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, two and a half inch square of designer series paper. It is the same size as this layer here. Um, the reason I chose this because it brought the pink out of uh, this piece of designer series paper, and I think this is the pretty in pink. And then my other layer, I want this layer and this layer to um, just be a shade lighter or darker than each other. Again, this is going to bring when I put this next to either one of, theirs, of these, see how there's contrast? What I'm trying to explain is in this pattern, because we're gonna be layering these pieces, you want to make sure that when you layer, you're still seeing contrast. You don't want colors or shades and stuff that are so close together that you don't see the pattern. So I was constantly looking and seeing that you know, even these two together, there's contrast. You can see the summer splash really pop from the pink. And then our frame, I just went with basic white because black or white always works well with anything. Um, but I just went with something basic. Of course, after you do your first card, if you see that you want to redo it again and change any colors around, that that's great. But I think to learn first, um, keeping it 
you know, just something basic and neutral is always good. Um, well, um, Vesta, yeah, it, it's, um, we're getting closer to having to make decisions. Um, but he's not, he's still showing me signs that he's, his body isn't totally giving up on him yet. Um, this is just an appointment to talk with the vet and, um, you know, he's not going to be able to give me a timeline, but he can give me some reassurance, um, about what's going on. And, you know, we just, I just need that talk with him. Um, it'll make me feel better that I'm not missing anything. And, uh, it's so hard as pet owners when we have, when we make that call, um, you know, you can let it all go naturally, which is hard to watch also. Um, I just, you know, want what's in Oliver's best interest. We want quality of life. So, um, believe me, I've had my, every day I have my moments when I cry and think this is it. And then he comes waltzing through like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah, things are happening, but I'm not ready. <laughs> So I've got to take my cues from Oliver and not get in my head so much. Okay. Hey, Mary Ann. Doris is in the house. Hi, Eileen and Mary. Stephanie, thank you for being here. And I really appreciate um, all the prayers that, uh, that you give Oliver. Um, I, I know he appreciates it, <laughs> and, and so do I. It keeps us it keeps us feeling that we've got a really good support um, system around us. And Debbie Oliver is actually a cat. He um, he's a tux long haired tuxedo. Um, May is his birthday month. He was found as a kitten along the side of a curb. Um, we don't know exactly in May when he was born, so we celebrate the whole month. And he has made it to his 15th birthday. This month of May is his 15th birthday. So he has a, had a very cushy, um, loving life. Um, I want to keep it going as long as his body will allow. Um, but... Uh, He's like my favorite, and I don't want to say that too loud because I've had a lot of kitties, and we do have a dog, um, but, you know, there's always that one child that tugs at your heartstrings, and that is me, Oliver. So, thank you for asking about that. Hi, Jean. Um, <laughs> yes, love for all our babies, dogs, and cats. Okay, so. I will, I will tell Oliver that you wished him a happy birthday. So let's get back um, to our quilt block. Now, let me explain a little bit about this quilt block. It is a quilt block that you will see in quilting. Um, I saw that it was a card done by Colleen Magnus. Um, her Facebook page is Creating with Colleen. And from what I understand, she demoed this quilt block at On Stage in, I believe, 2019. That's a date that I was seeing um, pop up. I'm just going to do one thing a little differently. And um, both ways are easy. Her way is easy. I think this way is easy. Um, I just have some bigger pieces that I can use just by, you know, cutting up cutting them up a little differently. So, um, this is our frame. So let's get that out of the way. Let's start with, this is going to be our focal point. Okay. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer because we need to cut this one and a quarter by two and a half inch strip, a designer series paper in half. So we're going to cut it in half, which would be one and a quarter. And then we will have two one and a quarter inch square 
pieces of designer series paper. Okay. So that, those two pieces go with that two and a half inch square of cardstock. Now you can be using all designer series paper if you want. I like to bring in cardstock uh, cards, card um, because I love that flat um, color. Um, our other piece of designer series paper, which is a two and a half inch square, I'm going to turn it on point. I'm going to put these two points in the track of my trimmer. And you'll notice I'm using this, these little bumpers up here to help hold that other point. And because this square is large enough, I can actually hold on to it with my fingers while I put the, um, you know what, I'm going to open this up again just because I want to bring my cutting blade um, in the middle and have it not going right up to the point and maybe squishing up that corner. But I can hold this to make sure that my, my points stay where they need to be. And I'm going to cut this in half on the diagonal. If you have chosen a directional um, designer series paper, cut your square the same size as this base right here. Uh, this is, I had you cut this at three and a half inches. Cut it at three and a half inches, and then you're going to cut diagonally in both directions. Why? Because if you only cut it once like this at two and a half inches, your you're going to lose your direction. When you put it down onto this base, you're going to see that if you're using stripes, your stripes are going one direction. And when you use the other piece, they're going a different direction. But if you cut a three and a half inch square and you cut it diagonally in both directions, you can get two matching directions and then you'll have two. The other two will be matching also darn it, you'll just have to make another block. <laughs> so um, if you're using directional paper, you're going to want to make that piece of designer series paper an inch bigger or the same size as the base that we're gluing it down to. Okay. As you'll see, when we cut this in half, this now is the same length as the outside of our square. And that's what we're going for here. Okay? So just a little explanation that if you're using directional designer series paper, you want to cut things a little differently. That way you can match things up if ma being matchy-matchy is your thing, which I think there's always, you know, uh, we always want things to look like they're even, so... If you're doing really scrappy, then don't worry about it. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Stephanie, Colleen is your upline? Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. I've seen her do many a quilt block. Once I found her um, when I was researching. Um, again, I've seen this quilt block done in fabric before. Um, but when I saw the quilt card and I researched it, it led me back to Colleen. So, um, that is awesome. She seems like a really good one to learn from. So I enjoy watching, I enjoyed watching her videos because when you watch one, you want to keep watching another one. Um, tell her I said hi, please. <laughs> please and thank you for such a fun quilt block card. Um, oh, Stephanie, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so let's bring in the silicone mat because uh, we need to glue our pieces down. Let's go back to our very first one. So this one here, um, I am just going to glue 
the two pieces of designer series paper into opposite corners. And it creates our four patch. Okay, so instead of cutting four individual squares and then having a foundation piece of paper underneath to adhere them to, one of those colors is just going to be our base. So that eliminates, it eliminates cutting of more pieces. It also eliminates how many uh, seams that you have to match up. <laughs> and so anytime we can, you know, get away from having to cut things that have to align perfectly um, and getting things to butt up to each other so that it looks flawless, we want to do that. It, it's just the easy way to go. We want to make things easier, not harder. So there's one. And again, these squares are going in opposite corners. And I will point out when we get to it how what Colleen did um, to get her little triangles where she used, um, she cut her triangles individually and set them in. Um, I want to show you how I just used a larger piece. I know I'm covering some of it up, but again, uh, for a lot of us, working with larger pieces is much easier on our hands. And uh, for, so for that reason, I wanted to show just this one other way so that you can then use whatever way is easier for you. It's, it's not a big deal. So there we have our four patch. And now we're going to take these um, triangles and we're going to glue these across from each other. Don't worry if your point in the center isn't exact because it's going to be covered up. You're not going to see it. And if you're a little long in the tooth on your points that are meeting to the outside, you can either even them out and then just snip off. If it bothers you that they hang over a little bit, but you're just going to glue those down to the side. I made a bonus card um, because what I did was I actually just used the reverse sides of these two designer series paper because I wanted to see what it would look like um, moving the colors around. And I will show you that when we're all done. just to give you an idea on how things could look differently. For instance, if you used the reverse side of this one, you would have this print going there. So there are so many opportunities to play with this pattern. I know you're gonna wanna make more than one block because you're gonna, as you're creating it, you're gonna be like, oh, what if I use this here? Well, that just means you have to make another quilt card. <laughs> you can never have too many quilt cards. And I don't know too many people, even men, who don't appreciate the work and the love that goes into one. Okay, so we have that piece there. <clears throat> now with this four patch, we're going to turn it on point, And it's going to go in the center of that square there. So here's what I wanna show you that Colleen did. What she did for these two triangles right here, she took a one and a quarter inch square, she cut it diagonally, and then she, she just laid a bin right here on the sides. I just did mine a little differently so that I didn't have those seams to worry about. And if I, you know, did I cut straight? Are things not lining up? And then do I have paper hanging off at the sides? Either way works. Either way is very easy. Um, this is just the way I've been doing things. And I just wanted to 
show you an alternative. Okay, so either way works. Now when you're looking at your your um, square and a square, you know, do I want, I'm looking for contrast. So I have contrast here between Summer Splash and Pretty in Pink. I've, con I've got contrast with the um, Berry Burst and the Pretty in Pink. I also have a lot of contrast this way. These two still stand out from each other, but these two colors really pop off of each other. So you want to decide, you know, how do you want to do it? I think I'm going to go this way because I like how it looks on the computer. I'm going to go back one more time. You know, and if the worst thing is, is you got to make two cards so you can get it both way, then you got to make two cards. I, I don't know when I'm looking at the computer. I think I like, like it this way. Now, when you go to glue your square, your uh, four patch in, if you just glue it down so that you're lining up, this line here goes right along the line of the piece underneath it. You can just kind of line up and make these lines follow each other. Then you are pretty much in the center of the block. So let's put this down. And again, I'm just going to, I'm going to eyeball it. But then I'm going to use my lines here and see that they're all, they're all lining up. And then I know I'm pretty well centered. Okay. So this is what I mean. You can see that this line here is going straight across. So that's how you can line up to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be with uh, gluing this um, four patch on, on point to that base there. So now we're at a point, this is our quilt block and we're going to frame it. I'm going to frame it in white, but I want to add some texture to my quilt block before I do that. And I am going to bring in the new um, eyelet, three, uh, eyelet embossing folder. I am actually going to deboss it. So that means I am going to set my texture down into the cardstock instead of it laying on top. And when you have the Stampin' Up! logo on top, if I put this in with the right side looking at me, then my texture is going to lay on top of my quilt block. If I want to recess it or deboss it, I'm going to turn it over. Get that off of the glue off of there. And then I'm going to close the embossing folder. And what I want to look at right now, in fact, I'm going to turn it over just to make sure. I kind of want to line up my eyelets so that they're kind of hitting in the middle. You can see there's a little dot right here. I'm going to try and put that dot where my corners meet. And then see here, I've got pretty little eyelets in each of the of the squares of the four patch. So I'm going to run this through real quick. And I'm going to open it up. See how the texture is sitting on top when you emboss. And I've recessed it 
meaning that the texture is going down in to the cardstock. So you just got to play with what look you like. What I would do is I would put a scrap of um, cardstock in your folder and run it through. And then that way you have a sample and you can see, you know, how do you want your texture on your card. With it raised up like this and uh, with all this pattern going on, I don't know. I, I wasn't sure how it would look. I should just give it a try. But I like it kind of like that. Okay, so now that we have some quilting done on our card, now we can glue it down to that frame. I am going to let you finish your card the way that you want to in whatever layout that you want to. But we're going to put this in a card, and you can just follow along. It's it's not a difficult card. It's not a fun fold. So um, if you want to write down the measurements as I give them to you, you can if you want to do it exactly the way I did. Or you can take your square, and you can come up with your own layout, which I thought would be fun to see over in the card group quilt cards and more. I'd like to see how you want to use it. Okay. So there is our quilt block. Wasn't that like the easiest thing on earth? <laughs> you can make a lot of these. Um, here's a suggestion. What if you made a lot of quilt blocks and you made yourself a box to store them in and you put the square on top of the box so that you would know what quilt patterns are in that box so that when you go to make a card, you've got a stash and um, it'll look beautiful sitting in your craft area. But I think that would be a really neat thing to do. Um, so that you can make a lot of quilt blocks. You don't have to necessarily use them as soon as you make them. You can stash them away, but you have a really pretty box that uh, you could put them in. I would love to see if anybody takes me up on that suggestion over in the group. Um, Jean, you love the new in colors? I do too. Um, you really need to get them in your hands to appreciate how pretty they are. When I was watching other people share them and stuff, um, sometimes color doesn't come across on our devices um, as true as they should. And so when you get these colors in your hands, you are going to be so surprised at how, how pretty they are. So I'm glad that we have um, some more bright colors. I know this is making Amanda very happy some some brighter colors but a, a little brighter in the subtle side of the color so um it, it, they work so well with what we already have um tony says i want to make some of them in a variety of colors oh and do a sampler tony you're on it you've become quite the the quilter when it comes to cards <laughs> Hi, Jan. How are you? Jan, where are you watching from? Okay. Hey, Sharon. Welcome. Yep. Samplers are a great idea. Keep that in mind. So, so many times we limit it to just a card, but think home decor. Make yourself some uh, six-inch samplers. They don't have to take up your whole wall, um, but... A little framed sampler tucked in in your decor and you made it yourself people will just be they'll love it you'll love it uh, Sharon says she went rogue I like it when people go rogue so Sharon I can't wait to see what your card looks like so let's bring in um, the card base that I am using is a half sheet of cardstock, but it's cut 
the long way. So it's four and a quarter by 11 and then scored at five and a half. But I'm going to put it in landscape mode. I find that for me, I don't know, maybe it's because I don't burnish the fold or whatever, but when I do a tent fold and it's in landscape, if I get too much weight on the front, my card wants to flatten out instead of stand up. But when I cut it like this, it always stands up. So I use, I use this fold a lot when I do landscape cards because I have a difficult time sometimes knowing when to stop <laughs> embellishing or when to stop layering and pretty soon it's getting heavier and then you're gonna if you want to balance it out you better put some stuff on the inside and on the back you know to kind of even out you know the heaviness but this way always works for me it is always going to stand up so um yeah, Betty, Amanda, she, you know, when I think of brights, that's, that's the first person I think of. Um, the inside is just a four by five and a quarter piece of basic white. I don't know exactly how I want to finish it. So I'm showing you the inside, but I'm not going to do anything with it today because I'm really not sure. I am making these Mother Day, Mother's Day cards. And so, you know, with Mother's Day's cards, you want to put a special sentiment in there. You may want to write something special. So um, I'm leaving the inside blank for now. I am going to put a piece of designer series paper on the back. Don't you just love how this looks like you should be able to touch it and you can feel this texture, but it's not, it's flat, but it looks like you've already maybe ran it through the embossing folder and you could, I didn't, but I am going to put this on the back of my card. I don't think it's a secret that I want the people to pay attention to the back of my card the same as they do the front and I need to clean up that nozzle a little bit. And I'm just going to put this just put it in the center there leaving that nice little border all the way around. And then somewhere here I have my button which is, which I use to sign my quilt. Now, if I'm gonna open this, I wanna make sure that I'm not putting it on upside down. Just gonna put this right in the center. So this is like your quilt label that you put on the back of your quilt. Um, you know, who made it, when it was made, who it was for. So that's like my quilt label. Now let's go back to the front. For the front, what I did was I took a four by five and a quarter inch piece of coordinating designer series paper. I cut a two by five and a quarter inch piece of designer series paper, which this is the same as what is on the back. And I did run this through the timber 3D embossing folder. So now not only do I see texture, but when I touch it, I feel it. Just to add another element to the card. Okay. And this is going to get glued down onto the front. Isn't this paper beautiful? Come on, glue. I don't want to have to stop and mess with my nozzle because then that means I'm going to get glue on my fingers. 
And you know what that means. I'm going to touch something else and then it's going to get glue on it too. So just center that and leave that border around it. And then I'm going to bring back in my quilt block. And I, you can put it right in the center. You can put it off to the side. Think about, before you glue it down though, think about what it is you're adding to the card. Um, for instance, I stamped Happy Mother's Day. This sentiment is from the perennial postage uh, stamp set. So think about what else you're adding to your card before you glue your block down. I want this, um, I'm looking at the one that I've already done. Well, it's not a secret anymore. We already made the mystery quilt block, so I can bring this out to you and um, show you what I did. And I kind of want to change it up. So this was the other card. These two pieces of designer series paper right here are the flip sides of these two that I'm using right now. So I just wanted to see, you know, I just switched them around and wanted to see uh, what else I could do with it. So I've got Happy Mother's Day going there. I just need to make sure that I have room. I think I'm going to do it off to the other side like this. And so I just needed to make sure that with the things that I'm going to add that there's room for them. So I'm just, I want to leave a little bit of this uh, strip here showing. Now you could pop this up if you wanted. You could certainly pop up your quilt block, put it on some dimensionals if you want. I'm going to put dimensionals on my sentiment so I didn't want it to keep getting higher and higher. Um, so that's why I chose just to glue my quilt block down. Just giving it a second here to make sure it adheres really well. I got a little bit of glue there to come back in with my adhesive eraser and touch up those spots okay and instead of uh, I'm going to put my happy mother's day down here so I'm going to flip it over I'm going to put dimensionals just on this one side because I'm trying to keep the height the same I could put a little bit of glue here if I wanted to so that everything is flush, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to just let it lay however it is. Mm, let's see. Put that right there. And then I've got one of the, the butterflies from um, the sweet, the perennial lavender sweet. These did carry over. And I put a glue dot on the back. I want to leave it so that my butterfly wings can stay up. Now they'll be flat when you go to mail it, but the receiver can play with the wings. Okay, I gotta be careful. I don't want it to go outside. So I'm just gonna put my butterfly right there. And 
I have a flower here. This is from um, one of the flowers from the uh, Petal Park Punch. It did carry over. That matches too much. So I want to change the color of my flower. I've got my punch. I need to find a scrap of pretty, pretty in pink. I think, what did I do with all my scraps? Ah, found one. Okay. We need some contrast. We don't want everything blending in together. So let's just do that. And then um, what I do with my glue dots. How am I on time? Oh, we're doing good. We're good. Let's... Please don't stick. <laughs> we'll just put... How do we want to put it like that? Just put it like that. Um, put our... Do I want my, do I want my butterfly? Well, coming in, yeah, he can be coming down to the flower. I wanted to get him a little bit further away from the flower so it all didn't look like it was running into each other. He could be flying down. Okay, Julie, don't overthink it. Just put it on there. So he's going to be coming down to the flower. And I want to make sure that my little butterfly gets attention. So I'm going to bring in some of these sequins. I'm going to bring in some gold. Gold will just give it a nice metallic color and give it a really pretty pop. And I'm going to put two of these little round ones, one up here by his head, and then another one on his body. Like that. And then I'll use a bigger gold sequin right in the middle of my flower. And I'm going to call it done. So the insides still need to be personalized. And you don't have to use Mother's Day. This is a beautiful birthday card. Uh, depending on your colors, I think this is a really pretty pattern. Even for a sympathy card, you would just want to maybe use some more neutral colors. But I think that it's got a really beautiful, soft feel. Um, shows a lot of love. And... Um, that's how I used the quilt block for today's card. Again, I want to see how you use your quilt block. You can put it in a totally different layout. You can put it in a fun fold. Um, we would really like to just see what spoke to you. So if you would share a picture over in the private group, uh, community group, Quilt Cards and More, which you can find a link to from my main chirpy page we would uh it's where we share it's where we create and share what we do and then we get inspired by what we see and the friendships that are made there and the support um for each other is like over the top <laughs> it's it's a great great group so if you don't belong yet please request to join there are I will tell you, there are some questions that you need to answer. They're not invasive by any means. I just want to make sure that we've got people in the group who um, we all have something in common with card making and quilts. Um, I don't want outside interference, and we've had it only a few times, but it does happen if you're not, you know, if you don't, if you just don't put some parameters in. Um, 
So um, please join us over in that group. We'd love to have you. And um, Tony says so much fun. Uh, oh, after your hubby goes back to work, I know where you'll be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so um, Kathy is asking if I will provide a PDF. Um, I can do that. Um, I will work on that in the evenings. Um, I would say I will have it done by this weekend. Okay. And if you get a chance, go to Colleen's, uh, creating with Colleen, um, Colleen Magnus. And if you want to look her up, you will be able, you may have to scroll. Oh, wait, I'm sure that you're going to find even you'll, you might see it even pop up on Pinterest. But if you want to see how Colleen explained it, this is an easy as pie quote block, um, just to see how she did it differently. And either way is easy. Just, you know, again, sometimes pieces can get small for our hands, especially if our hands don't work like they used to. So you can either cut two smaller squares in half and lay them in or cut one bigger um, square diagonally and just put it on the sides there. It's however it works for you. But remember, because I will put this in the PDF, if you're using directional designer series paper and you want those two sides to match, then your square is going to be as big as the base that you're putting it down on. And you're going to cut in half diagonally in both directions. And then you can pick out the two triangles that match each other. You'll have another set left over that matches each other. And you just make another quilt block. Okay? So, with that, I think we'll just... Um, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for... Just keep Oliver, please keep Oliver in your, in your thoughts. Um, it's one of those things, it, it, it's, I can't, I'm not going to get a miracle out of it and I have him forever, but we want to keep him comfortable and have quality. And so just, I really feel that staying in touch with his doctor is, it, it's good for my soul because I can overthink things so bad. <laughs> and um, this helps keep me focused also. So um, I, the birding festival starts tomorrow. It's um, local here. It's one for the last 10 years that I have been participating in by volunteering and uh, going on the trips that they provide. So Right now, I am not scheduling a Facebook Live for next Thursday. But if I do one, it will probably be at night. Because during the day, that's when the birds are out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm not going to do any night birding. So let's just kind of... I don't have one scheduled, but let's leave it open. Because I've been looking at some patterns that I really want... To share. So don't be surprised if there's a pop-up. You will get notice. Um, I won't make it a complete surprise. So let's just kind of leave that, leave that open for now. So um, have a great day. Have a blessed day. I will periodically be checking in to in the group to see maybe if somebody's already got their card posted. Um, so I'll be doing that here in a couple of hours. But for right now, I got to go get um, things ready to transport Oliver to see his doctor. So everybody have a blessed day. Um, oh, Kathy, you found it. Kathy just posted the link to Colleen's video. So please go check it out. Okay. She, she does some beautiful work. Uh, so... Thank you, Kathy, for doing that. And um, hi, Jasmine. <laughs> I'll be talking with you guys soon, okay?